everyone, Joshua Hanlon here at Brick Fair Virginia 2018, and today we are going to feature some very special products that you don't see featured on Beyond the Brick very often. We also have a very special guest with us. So if you want to introduce yourself and tell us why you're here at Brick Fair. Sure. My name is Matthew Ewald. Uh, uh, this is for work. This is, this is for another series, but uh, I play Nicholas Bluetooth on uh, Galador. And uh, I was invited to uh, just be here in case there were any fans of Galador, and I am humbled and pleasantly surprised that there were. Um, so yeah, I've, I've posted up, I've had to explain the look quite a bit. Um, but yeah, so I brought some photographs uh, if anybody was interested, but then we got the assortment of Galador toys, um, which just phenomenal. You know, we got uh, me, which I'm, I'm going to tell you, I still have on my dresser. Uh, so that was your character that you played in the show. Favorite. If you look right there, look at that. Galador! Galador! <laughs> look at that handsome devil right there. So there were there were two versions of that. This is the the regular with the, comes with Jens's arm, which was essentially from the first episode, and then we had a deluxe version, which was an episode where I glinched uh, these wings, the eggs wings. Okay. So those were the two Nicholases. Uh, we have Jens. Uh, now the cool thing about Jens is if there's a dial on the side of his head, so his hair comes up, the the eye elongates, just as they did in the show. Also comes with a. Uh, this like flamethrower type uh, item that I did also have in the show. We have, well, let's get to Allegra first because she's amazing. We have Allegra who uh, comes with, uh, never appeared in the show, but it's called the Kiwop and it was supposed to be a, a pet of Allegra. But, um, so we got her. We have Euripides who is the philosopher of Galador, comes with the, uh, the his staff, he can levitate things. Uh, He's one of my favorites just because it legitimately looks like Euripides. I mean, they all do, but like Euripides was just, you know, he's he's a buddy of mine, you know? <laughs> uh, we have Nepal. Nepal came with two versions. This uh, standard version, um, he comes with his, uh, the Luca is what it was called. And then he also has a deluxe version with the Schimmel, which is uh, on, he's from a realm called Elta Siktar, ice plant, or ice realm, excuse me, and it, uh, all these are kind of like uh, essentially horses, okay. but just very cool. And then we have the original, our regular version of Gorm. He was the villain, uh, very bad man, does terrible things, uh, very cool. And then his deluxe version, which you can see has a gold kind of paint job here, and um, and it comes with a bogue that fires out of his arm. So like, and also the deluxe version of Nick, you push the side buttons and the the missile shoot out. Okay. Some play features. Some play features, yeah. So you can like shoot siblings in the eye and stuff. Um, so then we have the Keck Powerizer, which was a very, very cool thing, but it, it would uh, interact with the show. So if you held it in front of the television series, it would, uh, you play a game and, and you hear Jens be like, oh no, and, and it was terrible. Uh, that was a terrible impression. Uh, shoot, and that's on tape now. Um, so that was very cool, but it, would, it was an interactive thing. This is called the egg. This is essentially the uh, the thunder tank from Thundercats of my my uh, the toys, okay. and um, it fits one character. It opens up. You can put any character inside it. Also shoots uh, the missiles from the from the wings of the egg. And then finally, we have the oni. The oni is an outer dimensional creature. Uh, very bug-like, uh, which actually I think that might be one of the fan favorites because it had so many pieces, so many legs that you could turn it into like monstrosities. But uh, that is the, uh, there's two that aren't showing. There's one called the Aquart, which uh, in episode two of the series, there were these uh, sub-dwelling creatures that try to take water from, like suck it out. And then there was Tager, who is uh, Gorm's like right hand not man, because he wasn't a man, he was a human, uh, but this like pincer, like, he was a jerk. Um, and then there was one unreleased set, uh, it was a motorcycle called the Mokar, but uh, but yeah, so we have we have the figures, we have the display right there of, of my mini-me, and it's been wild. Yeah, no, this is amazing, these products here, so, so for people who haven't heard of these before, we just went through them and, and showed kind of what the, sure. the story was there. What, what era were these out and what years were these released? So in, um, I worked on the series from 2001 to 2003. In 2002, these were released to coincide with the television series. Um, so they came out in 2002, uh, you know, like, obviously Lego took a chance. They, they, they did something different. Um, 
But I mean, again, like all all of the pieces for the set are interactive. Like they connect. Like you can the the egg. If you want arms sticking out of the egg wings, if you're into that, you can do that. Um, so everything was interconnected, which I thought was was really cool. And it's uh, yeah, it hit. And I mean, I know that you can find them out there. It, this is the first time I've seen these in many many years. Uh, you know, but uh, it's it's wild. It's it's very humbling to be back and to see everything that's been done since then. You know that there's still a there's still a you know a slight passion for it. So yeah. that's very cool. And some of these I think were even included in the McDonald's. Was it Happy oh, Meals? Yes. yes. So uh, McDonald's did uh, what was it? It was yeah five run. Um, they got Nicholas Bluetooth with a very cool helmet thing. We got Yens. We got Gorm, Euripides, and Nepal. Uh, yeah, those were Happy Meal toys from the same time, 2002 to 2003. Um, I always thought they should have made an Allegra. I'm just throwing that out there. Um, but yeah, so the, the merchandising was quite intense. You know, like it wasn't just the action figures. There were plans on skateboards and bed sheets. And, and we were uh, Captain Crunch cereal boxes. I remember that. So we were, uh, the figures were uh, like on the, the box, like flying through Captain Crunch, like the actual cereal and the captain was like, oh, that's a glinch or something like that, you know. But uh, but yeah, so uh, the merchandising was pretty intense for it. But um, that, that, was the, that was the extent of the Lego property stuff. So yeah. yeah, so those are some crazy products there, which you don't see out in the wild real often. So it's no, cool no. to see this yeah. whole collection yeah. here. So if you can talk some more about kind of your personal experience on the show, what that was like for you as an actor and kind of how that went. Sure. So uh, Galador was my second project that I'd ever done. And uh, I auditioned for it about eight times. Uh, uh, California, then I went up to Montreal, did a, a test. But when I booked it, like, this, it sounds it sounds insane to say, but... I knew it was mine from the breakdown. Like it was, I it was the dream. You know, I knew that it was it was mine, and uh, it was the happiest three years of my life. And and I, I not to belittle any other project I've been a part of. Not to the one I'm doing now. Why I look like a monster? Um, it's like that's not Nick. It's like e true Hollywood story. It's like what happened to him. It's like hey guys, uh, love Galador. It's gone downhill a little bit. It's like it was canceled. It was canceled. And then it's just, I turn into this, like I'm living in a gutter somewhere. No, I've been working, thank you. Um, very popular. Um, no, so it was, it was, it was incredible. But I mean, we, for three years, it was incredible sets. It was, uh, you know, talking animatronic heads. And it was, it was just the, the opportunity of a lifetime that literally I, I love with all my heart. Like I'm, and I'm biased, obviously, but I'm a fan. I am a true fan of it. I fought for nine years to try to give it finality, to bring it back, to just say goodbye to it. Because we did end on a cliffhanger, you know, spoiler alert. But, like, Gorm, you know, he's like, it's not over. And then he brings up my father. And it's like, well, I want to know. Like, I wanna, like, I'll do it for free. Just let me know what happened to my dad. Um, but, no, it was legitimately the happiest three years of my life. And, uh, and I miss the project every day. But I will say, being here at Brick Fair, it's closure like honestly it's like one of those things where it's i'm gonna turn around and you're gonna hear the incredible hulk music you know as i start walking away i'm gonna look back and i'm just gonna be like and then i'm just gonna like disappear like just fade away and it's like who was that it was like oh that was a canceled property but he's happy now he's at peace you know it's like you see a little it's like patrick swayze with ghost you know it's just it's just a lego figure of me just like going up to somewhere but uh but no, I, I love it wholeheartedly, and I it's it's great to 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 see it all collected one more time. Yeah. So it certainly is, and you know you've got the the talkback technology, the yeah. giant egg, all this stuff. So I mean, it's just spawned such crazy stuff. The Happy Meal products that is pretty unique with it within Lego products. It, it, it is, you know, because like I grew up with the brick sets. You know, I had the castle sets and and all of that. Sorry. <coughs> oh, I thought that was me. Did you hear that? It was like a cough and a whoa. <laughs> Um, I'm so powerful. Um, Galador! Um, no, I, uh, I grew up with Lego. I've loved Lego. So when they showed it to me for the first time, like, I think I blacked out. Like, I couldn't process that it was mine, you know? Um, but, uh, like, to this day, I, I'll still get Lego sets. It, it, we're going to have a date night, fine. You know, I build a Millennium Falcon. Um, the Han Solo one, not the big one. So if Lego wants to send me the really big one... <laughs> you won't turn them down. I won't turn you down. Like, I'm not going to say no. Um... <laughs> But but no like I've I've loved Lego 
you know, for I actually I I picked up a few Legos here. Okay. Yeah, some like custom made Legos. So I'm I'm actually it's all under the table right now. I'm really excited to uh to to like stop so I can go play. Um, but no, I mean like it's it they weren't brick sets, you know. And I think when you say when anybody says Lego, it doesn't matter if it's 2002 or now, you think of brick sets. You think of you know all of Lego has spawned, you know, with the movies and everything. And so they tried something different. Didn't go according to plan, but um, doesn't doesn't lessen the fact that you know they took a chance and it's still you know it's a connective in some way, but um but no I mean I've I have since Lego has been so deeply me a minifigure of myself you know a custom me and and that that just means everything but um no it's it's super cool to just kind of dive back into it and to see all of the all of the fun stuff you know like. And also, I'm not gonna lie. There's there's been a few kids who have who have shown up, like young kids who have no idea what it is, who have seen them and be like, "Oh, those are cool." And it's nice because it's like you hear stuff over the years, like, "Oh, it, it didn't work. It didn't work." It's kind of always that failed property. Yeah, it's it, and it, it it carries that stigma, you know. And and regardless of that, you know, we still had the show, and I'm I'm deeply proud of the show. I'm deeply proud of the toys. I mean, it. I believe in chasing your stars. I believe in, in fighting for your dreams. And I think to be a small kid in Mound, Minnesota, dreaming of being an actor, like acting outside of my family, it's it's oxygen. You know, I love it. I need it. But uh, to at 18 years old, to, to be shown like, here's your action figure. It's like people can say anything they want. It is the best thing that's ever, you know, like it's the most amazing thing. Like, I, oh, oh, you don't like it? I do, you know, and I, I have I have many of them on my dresser. So I wake up in the morning, I'm like, hey guys, you know, I, I you know I don't let it go. Um, but you know, like I, I like that now. I mean, especially you you walk around here and you see that people can build anything with anything. On the back table here, they've taken hundreds of of Galador pieces and made these things from scratch. All Galador pieces. Yeah, and we it, should actually maybe walk over yeah, there and take. Yeah, let's let's, let's just walk walk, walk around here real quick. Because there's some pretty crazy stuff. So we'll let Matthew sign an autograph real quick while we walk over here. But it, just have John, if you just want to slowly pan over some of these incredible creations here. Because this is just a feast for the eyes. I want to shout out to Micah here. We've had on the channel before. And this, this creation, uh, I believe he said this is a musician. So his two Adam's apples help him hit notes most would not be able to. So that's the kind of thing you see here on this Galador table. And it's just crazy stuff like that. Like Matthew was saying, uh, there's so many combinations, all these different arms and legs and everything uh, fit together. So you can just see this stuff as you go down the table. Here's the egg that he was talking about. So that big box set, this is the egg. And it right now has like legs and arms and things attached to it. Uh, but that actually opens up and uh, you can fit one of the, the figures in there. So we might give an example of that in a second here uh, once Matthew comes back over. But it's just so much crazy stuff. <laughs> Okay, you're back. I'm, sorry. <laughs> no, it's all I'm good. so it's all sorry. Good. You got the it's like They're literally leaving right now, and, and it's like somebody comes out who legitimately cares enough to want an autograph, Galador. Yeah, yeah you, no. you want to make the fans happy. Yeah, I was just, so I was not, just explaining to, some I'm of the so craziness sorry. here. I, just, I totally left you. He's like, I'm, we're gonna leave right now, and then the, the kid with his puppy dog eyes. I'm, I'm just like, oh my god. Okay, so, so uh, some gentlemen from Lego, from uh, Bill in Denmark, they came and they brought like suitcases full of this stuff. And it was just, they had uh, on day one, they just, people could come and build this stuff. And now I've seen stuff on the internet with this, but like this is the full extent of what you could do with the pieces. You know, like, you know, maybe, maybe people couldn't afford too much. Maybe, you know, couldn't find them, whatever it is. But like with so many pieces, like you're like, these are amazing. Like, like this, this one in the far back, like with all of Euripides staff, I mean that that is astounding. I mean they all are, but like, like you got you got, it's imagination, and I think that isn't that isn't that what Lego is? Like it, it is. You can tear stuff down, you can build it up, and I think that's the beautiful thing. And I've 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 said this once, but Galador, it it didn't work the the merchandising for whatever reason, but Lego, that's what they're good at. They're good at taking something that's broken and rebuilding it. I know it sounds super corny, but it's like. The Ninjago City came out, and there's the Galador poster there, and there's a, gen uh, a gentleman, there's a minifigure with the Galador shirt. And to me, as a fan of Galador, as somebody who lived it, 
it is, it's everything to see Lego not try to sweep it away under the rug, but to, you know, like it was a unfortunate thing business wise, but to, to come back and be like, you know what? Fair enough. You know, let's they and to embrace it. And, and I, I mean, that means so much to me and I can't speak for anybody else, but that cast and crew. I mean, you know, I hate it when actors say like, oh, we're all a family and then they're, they're it's not. It's yeah. just blowing smoke. But for me, three years, they they were my family. They were honorary aunts and uncles and brothers and sisters. And I mean, Mary, who, who played Allegra, I mean, she she was my best friend. You know, and Sam, Jeff, and Claude, who played Jens, Euripides, and Nepal, they were my best friends. And, um, you know, I see, we go to birthday parties and all this stuff, but for them, like, Galador was special. And I know that from talking to them, but it was special. And then to come here and see what it could have become, you know, the figures, like, the amount of work and imagination, and, like, some of these on the other side, you know, like, see some of those. Yeah, uh, there's some that are, like, like I'm just, like, I'm blown away yeah. by it. Like, like, check, like, look at look at Nepal, right? Like, look at that dapper, handsome man, you know? Like, like that's just, that's amazing. And these are using other parts now. You know, not just Galador, but other parts. Look at this uh, monstrosity of, you know, part Nepal, part Euripides, part Yens. We got Gorm here who's, like, ready to kick butt. And then this was literally made today. Um, that's that's uh, again, it's for work. Um, but that's me. That's modern. That's that's a bad day, Nicholas Bluetooth, right there. Is what, what is what I'm gonna say. Uh, he went to an outer dimension and and or fell, that's, fell in with the wrong crowd. Yeah, yeah that's Nikki. Nikki uh, was my evil doppelganger who kind of got reformed at the end of the episode in in one of the seasons, and then he was like got sent away, and I'm like, all right, you know, bye bye. And uh, like Nick must have sent him to the wrong dimension, and he's like, he like turned into this. He's like, no, I want revenge. Um, but like these are just. These are beautifully crafted. I mean, look at look at this. This is yeah. this is Jens. It's a full, you know, like he looks like. Yeah, uh, he looks like you know you talk like a gardener or something. Like a, like a, like a samurai gardener to me. You know, like I, I love it. I absolutely love it. It's it's amazing. But like that's that's Galador, and 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 it's really heartwarming to to be here, and see Galador made the like the way that it was always intended so i think that's very cool yeah that, that is incredible thanks so much for taking us through your story and taking Thank us you. through the builds and the products and everything here this is amazing i'm so glad you could make it to brick fair i think all the fans definitely appreciated meeting you here and like you said there are still a lot of fans of the the series out there so this has been really great thank you yeah thank you no it uh i will cherish these two days for the i mean i say it without hope or agenda but for the rest of my life this has been one of the greatest experiences of my life and I, I got a little choked up so i'm not i'm not gonna get choked up but um thank you guys yeah, so much sure. thank you everyone for for giving me some time uh but that's it definitely thank you so much thanks for watching everyone i hope you enjoyed that look at galador